Hello there, sweet soul. This is Infinity, and I want to thank you for coming to my channel and my video here. I'm super excited about this reading, or these readings, I should say, that I'm going to be doing. I was guided to branch out in the different readings that I provide, and I'm super excited about it because I really do love doing tarot and oracle readings. So in this video, we are going to get into love and romance energies for our light body collective. And um, we're going to be channeling the uh, energies of these beautiful animals that were coming through to me, They that are going to be guiding you. So it's up to you to pick the, the animal that is most resonating with you at this time. So that would be the lion, the wolf, the horse, or the elephant. And this can represent you or your loved one, or if you don't have somebody in your life currently, um, this could be just kind of the energy that you maybe really resonate with in a partner. Um, or this could be just the animal spirit that's absolutely coming to you. So, uh, and a little bit about me, if you don't know me, my name is Infinity. I am a psychic, physical empath, uh, medical medium, psych, uh, psychic channel, uh, natural born energy healer. I provide a lot of energy healing services, uh, a really in-depth, energetic, physical, spiritual healing and clearing, including chakras and connecting with your guides and guardians. It's really um, quite shamanic in its nature. And uh, it's meant for really serious souls, meant to really level up and be serious um, about their ascension. And so I offer two hour free consultations for that program, including a, uh, mini it's not very mini but it, it is compared to the big stuff a mini energy healing so you can see what it's like to connect to me and uh so check that out if you're so guided but i offer a lot of different uh services i also work with animals animal healing distance animal healing and communication i do um as you can see i have a lot of crystals i am very much connected to the to Gaia and her crystals and how we work with them. So I have a service that's called, um, I'm guided to show you guys this lovely um, point. It's a uh, Chevron amethyst point. These are pretty rare, but I have a beautiful crystal shop very near to here and I can walk there in five minutes and they have basically wholesale prices and I do something called crystal gathering with Gaia, where I, I, I work with Gaia to pick out specific crystals that are just meant for you and uh, psychic advice and channeling and private med meditations and all sorts of stuff. So anyway, please go ahead and check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org for more information. We're going to get into the first reading here for the lion. So if you chose the lion as your, as your guide, let's just put it that way. If the lion is your guide today, along with me, then this is your reading. And feel free to watch all of them if you want, but we're going to get into the energy of the lion. Now, again, this could be for, for you, for the person in question. We'll just go with this and see how this works for you. If it doesn't resonate, uh, you, can, oop, you can try. If it doesn't resonate, you can try um, possibly now and see how it works. Okay, let's get started. Um, and this is the, the Light Seer's Tarot. This is the Six of Pentacles. We're going here first. King of Swords. Two 
two of pentacles. Doesn't want to, okay, whatever. <laughs> it wants to focus on everything else. Ace of wands. Six of Pentacles, King of Swords, Two of Pentacles, Ace of Wands. All righty. We're going to keep going here. There's our next card. Ace of Swords in reverse. King of Cups under the King of Swords. Wow. King of Wands. Whoa. <laughs> to the Two of Pentacles. And there's a lion here with our King of Wands. So lion making his appearance here. In reverse, under the Two of Pentacles. Very interesting. There we go. This one. The lovers, you guys, are we in reverse? We are in reverse. Whoa. And the star. Okay. Okay. Whoa. You guys, this is really a lot of Look at all this king. Look at, we have three kings here. I'm seeing past, present, and future. Now this could, now, I really think this is speaking to, um, this could, well, this could be speaking if you're a man, if you're a female, if you're gay, if you're straight doesn't really matter, but we're, I'm going to talk in divine feminine and masculine energies just because that's how I work and I think about stuff. So I feel like I'm talking to the divine, more of the divine feminine in this situation about divine masculine energy being your, um, your romantic uh, partner. So what I'm seeing here with these three kings is like past, past, present, and future with, with divine masculines in your, in, in your life. So past, present, present, and future. So it feels like this king of cups was more your past and that he wasn't he was there but he was in his own world kind of doing his own thing not really seeing you see his eyes are closed um that's the first thing that's popping here and So for a while, we could be just like not with anybody. Or if you are with somebody, um, they've kind of gone, or you guys have kind of separated and di into different lanes a bit. Or that's exactly what happened and why there was separation. I'm, okay, with the six of pentacles, I know I'm jumping around. It's just kind of how it's coming to me. 
Um, with the six of pentacles, it feels like you definitely have had your share of people in your life, um, partners, romance, but they're not, or they, they're just, they, none of it is, has worked out. Maybe, maybe you had, maybe you had something that was longer term, but it still wasn't right. So you could have been married or in a long-term relationship with somebody, but it just, it either ended or you feel like that's, that's the way it needs to go. You guys have kind of have separated or more energetically than maybe in the physical. Um, it's like, there's just two different, two different lanes of focus here. So whether it's somebody that you have already separated from, or you're thinking about separating from, it is a good decision. It was a good decision because you're just going into, there's just two different directions, completely two different directions. So then there's this time of kind of balance, uh, balancing things out again, getting equilibrium back, um, and getting into who you, who you are, what that means. So taking some solitude and feeling that I'm feeling, I'm feeling this is about really healing, doing some deep, energy work, healing work, possibly um, different ways that you can clear out energy, at the very least cord cutting, that sort of thing, but really getting into it deeply here um, about getting past the past. Like getting to a place where you're like, yeah, I just, I need to be in I need to be in a new place. Um, really getting that that deeper like soul connection stuff with yourself, getting more into meditation. Uh, And here we have the King of Wands. Really about like, this is future. But what I'm getting here is that he hasn't come around yet. And look at, we have the lovers. Um, And so this hasn't happened yet because he hasn't come around yet. But this is what, that's where we're headed. So I feel like this, now we're seeing, now I'm seeing this as a different, as a different kind of, symbol for you. So this would be you now, you really working on yourself kind of day and night. You're all about it. You're kind of like, you know what, I'm going to do what, what I saw other people doing and really just going inward and focusing on me instead of so much like focusing on the many and the outside and making it work with other people and um, just really not, it's kind of like one after the other kind of thing. Uh, 
but you've come around a lot of really awesome people. It's not like you've had bad, you know, horrible people. It's just that it hasn't lined up. It's, it's been an energy and a timing thing, you know, just on different paths, but it feels like they're all very, and of course this is always true, but very meaningful for your development, for their development, kind of putting pieces together and you can look back and go, yeah, that made sense while we were drawn together and together. Um, but again, it's just different paths. And it would definitely, if you haven't already, it would definitely be good to get into I'm seeing like drumming, that kind of thing, dancing, sacred circles and things like that. Um, I feel like that would be a really good place. And just really taking, taking yourself um, and your divine union with yourself really seriously. It feels like you go within, like it's not so much the outer, it's the inner. Um, that, that that's a place where you've gone to. And I'm hearing like with the lion, it's like, hey, follow me. We're gonna, like, we need this time of solitude. And it's a good time for that because we have the, the pandemic, right? You can really, um, hopefully, well, not everybody can, can, people are kind of stuck together for some, in some situations, but no matter what your situation is, really seek more time working on on you and healing you and doing inventory and doing cord cutting is coming up again cutting cords i'm seeing with this ace of wands like all of these connections to all of this past all of these people and this can also be um not necessarily the, the just romantic partnerships, but even in ways that you take care of people or you took care of people. I could be talking to like even nurses or doctors. I'm really feeling more like somebody who's a nurse or hospice worker or something to that effect, or maybe you had people in your life that you had to really take care of, like on a, in the family, like, um, so kind of seeing both of those things and both of those things being a factor. Also, it could be that your, your own situation and energy had to be split up. So it was difficult for you to focus on, um, a relationship. I feel like we're looking at a, a person who coming in. <laughs> There's a lion. Uh, coming in would be your age or older i'm feeling older with this king um not by a whole whole lot but a bit he's a bit more mature uh or if it's a female that's a divine masculine they're i should say they're more mature um but very confident very very but not cocky. Uh, very into the stuff you're into and into stuff that you don't know about and want to learn about, like that sort of stuff, you know? Um, and the, it'll be like, I'm even seeing this as like at first, like 
a friendship. Um, yeah, it could even be, I'm feeling like at, at first glance, it just, it may not even register, but, um, or it could be the total opposite, like a boom kind of thing. Um, when you guys come together. But this is definitely on the horizon with the person that's coming in for you. Is this the lovers? What what else? What can we say here? We're looking at a real soul connection, a real deep soulmate type of connection. You could even be like, wow, I never thought that I would like that kind of thing was meant for me sort of thing. But it's definitely coming <laughs> with you lions. Uh, but you need to heal first. You need to go through some period of, of being alone, clearing your energy, going through healing, either on your own or with others. You're guided to work with me. Fantastic. But at least start with cord cutting. I offer a, I have a free ebook and a guided astral meditation on my podcast that is the companion of the cord cutting. So all of that is free on my website. So please take advantage of it. At the very least, you literally I'm seeing we need movement, we need dancing, we need to start getting that stagnant energy out. And I do feel like I'm feeling the new moon with this energy right here. That's what I heard when I looked at that I'm like what am I looking at here and I heard new moon so uh really work around these energies with the new moons for these lions you guys because I mean I'm even seeing like the lion you know just taking in the, the nice dark sky we can't see the moon it's a dark moon or she's very 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 faint because there's no light. Um, and taking in the energies of a reset, of an energetic reset that is coming with this new moon, with the portal on the 22nd, with the stellium that we're in, the Aquarius stellium that we're in right now. Most definitely. And so focus in on that energy. Um, think about what you need, who you need to cut from, who you need to cut from that keeps coming up. And, and it's just, and if it's people that are still in your life, you can do a cord cutting and that's a reset. That is like just resetting the energies with you, but really focusing in on on doing some meditation for connecting with your guides, connecting with um, your body, clearing out your chakras, uh, kind of lean into whatever kind of divine beings really are coming through for you, whether it's the fairies or the angels or just your ancestors just really try to be like who who am I really feeling who's really talking to me and then really open up to that it's like a night and day thing like when you're if, before you go to sleep at night um think about connecting and during the day make time for that too um, but again, we have these three kings here, really intense, powerful energies coming up with this divine masculine feeling like we're gonna finally be balancing out the weight of like what you gave versus what you got. And it was always more giving and, than, than getting in return. And all of this 
is also giving me a layer of you're going to have this like well-rounded masculine in your life that you've been really and he is going, going to be king level like you don't get higher than king level so it's he won't be lacking like you need a you need a strong man and he's definitely a strong man he's responsible he's loyal he's passionate he's caring he's creative he's he's very similar to you in that he likes to do a lot of different things he's into the metaphysical he's very spiritual um and it's like i feel like that it's already like swirling around these energies are bringing you two together and and just to be open to a shift and to not be afraid of this new partnership that's coming um and and just don't think too hard about it try not to try not to think too too hard about it because truly this is like written in the stars 17 with the star um I'm feeling like it's it's going to feel like very magical, very psychedelic, even this union, very, very magical, like really, really awesome energy. I'm feeling with this. This is really awesome energy coming in. I mean, look at this. This is. I mean, yeah, <laughs> right? This is really awesome. It's just, it's not all right side up because the star is, because it's always been written in the stars. So the star came out up. It's always, I'm hearing it's always been written in the stars. Um, but he's still, he hasn't shown, he's still making his way. You're still making your way we're still clearing out energy. And, and again, if you're with, if you're in a situation where you're like, yeah, this, this is, we're going in different directions. Is there somebody for me? I'm so quirky and different and, and can there possibly be the one for me? Guess what? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> there can be, and there is, he exists. He is in existence, believe it or not. And and you guys are a perfect match. It's going to be really, really awesome. Um, so really stay positive about that. Work on you. I feel these energies getting reset with this new moon, the stellium, the portal on the 22nd. Um, don't look for this dude to be walking in or this woman who is the divine masculine. Don't look for, th for them to be coming in um in february these are the energies that are getting worked on now and you need to do some work with healing and clearing and and falling in love with love and not being afraid of love and and things not working out or you know being bummed about things not working out in the past or if you've been by yourself for a while um so I'm definitely feeling that there has been, for some of you lions, that there has been a, a good amount of solitude already, um, but still not maybe ready for them for you to actually share your life with somebody, or maybe you've been focused on other things. And I think that maybe the pandemic has kind of shifted things around a little bit energetically um you maybe even could have gone from i don't i'm never going to have a person i'm not that's not for me to kind of shifting your your feelings about that and thinking you know what maybe there is um so you could have been alone for you know just single status for a long time just totally doing your thing not looking at all but all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I feel like there is this component 
and and you just need to to get on board with with allowing that to come in and not be worried about what it's going to look like just have faith that it is and be in the I don't know, like in the excitement that like it's coming and whatever it's going to look like is whatever it's going to look like. We don't need to um, know all the details right now because there's nothing to really sort out except for you and knowing that we've got this star situation happening. Okay, so moving on, I want to get a... I want to get a part of fairy oracle. Whoa. Oh my goodness. I'm putting all of that back. It's meant to be, it'll come. Whoop. There we go. The maiden card. Oh my goodness. Card number 22. Speaking of the 22nd, 222. So here we go. That's popping right out me. Um, wow. Let me get our book and read directly from it. For the maiden, card number 22. Wow. Look at that. I love these cards. This is the, the Heart of Fairy Oracle. By Brian Froud. Um, okay, so the maiden, first love, wonder, endless possibilities. Always in that magic state between girlhood and womanhood, the maiden lives in a, the place where everything is possible. Love and romance are her lifeblood. And where she walks in fairy romance, where she walks in fairy romance blossoms and love flowers and, and leave flowers in her wake. The honey sweetness of first love is always on her breath. No matter what our age or sex, we must honor the maiden and acknowledge her in our lives and relationships. It is important to remember how we felt when we first became aware of romantic love, whether through our own experiences or through books or films, whatever portrayed that first awakening for us. We become jaded and with time and experience. We look Sorry, we lock our young emotions away and forget about them. It is important to remember those emotions every once in a while. They will not always be happy memories. First love can be very painful, but even the pain of a first love is very different from what we feel as more experienced travelers in the realms of romance. When the maiden appears, take the time to remember how you felt when you first fell in love. You can't go back, but you can remember and take some of that wonder and sense of endless possibility with you on your continuing journey. Oh my God, I love this so much. It made me kind of emotional because it's so pure. Like that first love that like, oh, this is just so magical and it's just endless possibilities. It's beautiful. It's not fearful. Um, You have the support of your of your guides and in, in experiencing that. Um, but what's really important for that in this in this reading is what I'm hearing is to get and to have that fairy tale romance you must believe that it's possible. You have to believe that it's possible to have it, to have this. And 
trust me, it most certainly is. But there's two things you have to do. You have to believe that it's possible and you have to just let it happen by just doing you and not worrying about anybody else. Where is he? What's going on? What's it like? What it's, what it's going to be? None of those things, no matter what your current situation is, no matter what. Um, and if you do know of this particular person, you're like, this is the person, then you need to just focus on you and allow for for the energies to reset everything so all of the components can come together. Remember, we have two aces, three kings, the lover, six of pentacles is so abundant, so, so um, even in its distribution of energy. The maiden is coming in to just say, you need to believe and remember that first romantic love and how magical that is. And, and you can rewrite it in your next, with your next love and your next, you know, life in this chap in this chapter for yourself, because it could be like first love after you transformed yourself and after you're a totally new person and after you've connected with your soul and your soul tribe and you're like you may even have been celibate or or decide i'm going to be celibate for a while and i'm going to wait for my my king to my my different levels of this king showing up um and really honor that relationship before it's even here and not dabble around and really focus on harnessing my my love and self-love and sexual energy really work on the kundalini i'm really feeling that with this here too this union is going to be very magical sex magic is a real thing it's a it's the most powerful creational energy there is and you know think sex creates human beings creates life what's more powerful than that so it is the most powerful energy and we may need to just hold back on that for a while and really focus on the self and and wait until it's really super obvious this is this is the person hi you and your loved ones are safe. New moon in Cancer for our moonology. You and your loved ones are safe. So what I'm hearing here is you and this person are safe. Your union is safe. It's still happening. It's going to happen. If there's so if if it's if I'm talking to somebody who's like I have my person but we're just separated right now but the plan was to get back together, then I do see that that's a possibility here, but there really needs to be some separation and some healing. But you also need to know when that's not the right person anymore. Um, I really do feel for the most part though, we're talking about a new, a complete, completely new thing coming or it's been a long time since they've since they've been in your life um either way it's going to be totally magical totally new and really really intense and it will feel like it was designed in the stars and very much cared for and and the more that you get to know them the more that'll come out all right. Well, my lions, congratulations on this amazing reading. Uh, just work on you. Keep the faith day and night. Work on connecting and establishing those, those energetic soul song frequencies out into the universe that you're, that you're working towards this amazing union. And, um, and that you're sending love to your divine partner, whomever that is. Um, he's very powerful. 
very, uh, he's a beautiful person. He's very powerful. He's very much the, the one that you've always dreamt of, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. It's pretty freaking awesome. So just tap in with those new moon energies, please. New moon. Um, I'm feeling that so much here. These new moon energies are really important coming in the 22nd to just open up and really lastly, um, what I'm going to say is take time over these next couple weeks between the new moon on the 11th and the portal on the 22nd to do as much cord cutting, as much clearing, as much healing, at least the beginnings of it. Be guided in how to heal, how to work on your on clearing any love wounds, any 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 remnants of things that are anything that's lower vibrational, because it's just gonna delay this. I mean, this feels very inevitable to me. There isn't a whole lot of question it just feels like this timeline can kind of stretch out depending on how much you're into into really going there you know doing this and and having this energy this energy says it all right here like just believe in the impossible and miracles and magic and real true destined destiny soul mated twin flame kind of love because that is the deal here and surrender to the process surrender to connecting with that with that energy um and the sooner you start tapping into all of this stuff the sooner it'll manifest for real in your life okay that's it guys thank you so much for for joining me on this and um next up is the wolf our wolf people cannot wait all right guys bye for now well hello there wolves thank you so much for joining me i'm really excited to do this reading i just had a great one for the lions and now it's time to see what's up for love and romance for those of you who chose the spirit animal the wolf so this could be that that is your spirit animal totem, or it was just really calling to you right now. Could be that your um, mate, if you know them, reminds you of a wolf. It could be that, that you feel like the wolf, but whatever it is. However it was that the wolf spoke to you, um, that's what brought you here. So welcome, welcome. Uh, we are going to be getting into this reading, we're going to pull some cards. I don't really have a specific amount. Just we'll go for it and see when I'm told to stop. And then we'll pull a couple of Oracle cards. Okay. So here we go. This is love and romance. This is really getting into those energies for the new moon and right around, you know, this is February. So it's Valentine's Day and all that. We have the stellium that we're in. We have six planets in the in the stellium when we have our new moon, and <clears throat> then we have our portal for that 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 twenty two portal. Here's our first card: the High Priestess. Card number two: the High Priestess. Okay. Here's another card: the Sun. Wow. So the sun <laughs> after the high priestess. Oh, and here's another card. Eight of Pentacles. Oh boy. Oh, this is pretty cool. Um, here's another card. The Page of Swords. Wow. Okay, I'm going to keep my mouth shut here for a minute. They're saying, don't start talking yet. Keep this moving. All righty. All righty. The fool. 
under the high priestess. Three of wands, carrying right side up. Sometimes you just go with what comes out. Sometimes you have to turn it around. Three of pentacles. So three of wands and then three of pentacles. Interesting. Going to split the deck. And the split again. And there's our card. Nine of Cups in reverse. One more I'm hearing. So same configuration as I did last time. And this is our card, the Empress. Wowza. As our ninth card is the Empress. Wow, and another three. So we have three, 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 so nine, we have another nine, but we have the high priestess, the sun, the eight of pentacles, the page of swords, is that right? Page of swords, the fool, three of wands, three of pentacles, nine of cups in reverse. Our only reverse card is the nine of cups. And then the empress. Um, all right, so let's tune in here, see what comes. Okay. Well, first things first with this, with this high priestess, I'm feeling like there's a good amount of energy with manifesting, like really thinking about manifesting your partnership, your divine masculine, your divine feminine. Um, And I feel like I'm talking here to more of the divine feminine, not necessarily that you're a female, but you're the divine feminine aspect. We have both in us and they really are meant to be balanced. Um, and that's the goal is to balance out our energies, but we identify usually as one or the other. Um, that could coincide with our sex or not necessarily. Uh, anyway, I feel like I am talking to our divine feminine aspects here, at least for this portion. And you've been working on, again, working with the law of attraction and manifesting working with um, crystals and essential oils and just really getting into maybe you, maybe you're a healer, maybe you do Reiki, maybe you're just all into that. Um, and it's been awesome. It's been really, really great. And um It's really helped kind of balance things out in your world. I think I'm feeling here that for a lot of 
a lot of you, it was, wow, this just really opened up a whole new world to me that's completely taken over. I've changed everything. Could have like been a, prof you know, really professional, um, maybe more traditional kind of stuff, but kind of left left that really focusing in on your your study the metaphysics traveling nature connecting with the divine and really deciding to see things um and do things and start off doing things completely different, like totally new. Um, new, different. I feel like I'm talking just the people who are like self-employed, more independent, um, maybe even spent a lot of time alone, um, or just with a select few. And that you've been really patient. You've been, you have really been like, you're kind of like a wolf, like, I'm, I'm totally cool with doing me, doing my own thing, not, not really focusing in so much on love and romance, to be quite honest with you. It's been very much about, you know, you, you learning, you, you focusing on yourself, you shifting and changing your own, your own situation, your own, like what's going on with you, which is fantastic. So bravo, you're definitely validated and like the whole way that you've decided to reinvent yourself and transform and do this whole new thing, whether that's more new for, you know, for some of you, um, you know, really kind of separating from things of the past or a way of doing things uh, or being with certain people that were um, just very different. I just feel like very different, um, but definitely spending time alone, um, but it being very productive. And you've there, I see a good balance of, of working on the inside, working on the outside, being in nature, doing research, <clears throat> traveling even like I said. Um, but what we have here truly is I'm just, what I'm feeling here with this Empress, of course, she's, they're showing you like Gaia and like the, how the Empress is, is usually seen pregnant. Um, and it just, it feels like I feel like this is about I'm feeling this very split into two. I feel that this could be just okay. Let's start here. If you have a family, and there's been possibly I don't know something a little stagnant or whatever, you're changing yourself. Has your development has really um is really really been been good for allowing for abundance to come in um because i feel it's just kind of like raining down um so 
So it's like, so there's two things. If, if they're like, again, if the family, this whole kind of change has really been a very positive thing um, that you've changed things, really took the reins on getting healthy, getting in tune with your guidance. Again, really tapping in. And at the same time, I see like, if you're, if you are that single person, you don't have, you know, the family life already that, Um, there, it is coming. It's definitely coming, but at the same time, it's, there's going to be a, a, a bit more time of your solitude of you embarking on in, in, in different, different things. There's just different things still for you to do with what you've already learned. This is like really telling the story here of like being connected or having your spiritual awakening, going, you know, gradually going through that, the whole motions of connecting, leaving the material matrix more behind, getting into the abundance matrix, doing research, getting into, into stuff about that is really feeding your soul. It could be astrology. It could be um, it could be taking courses. I'm seeing that sort of stuff, but like really steady, studying. Um, and really just going with that. And then, so we're having this, this period here where we're going to need to put all that together and then have this forward movement, but we're, and then in that, I feel that eventually we do have this, this situation here. Um, you have created with your intention to manifest and it's going to be coming, coming down. Um, there's definitely going to be this family life. You may even meet somebody who already has a child or two. Um, it makes them quite suddenly. But there's a lot of creation that needs to take, take place with you one way or another. And um, I feel that that really needs to happen kind of more on your own to start. If we're talking about creative endeavors, that sort of thing. Um, but your time alone has been very fruitful, very purposeful really important your your ability to just go yeah you know what I know it's coming like I don't think you there's a whole lot of uh doubt with you that you're going to have your partnership um and you're okay to wait you know that there's stuff that needs to be done um and it's going to be very uh family oriented almost very quickly into whenever this activates could come like pre-installed with a with a partner that has children already maybe you have children already and they're going to blend together that could be part of it um 
And I even feel for some, like the, the whole thing with even having a baby, starting a family, that could have been something you definitely decided you're not doing or you're done. But something, I feel something happens to shift that, to really shift that and make you just leave all of that. Whatever you, you may have thought about when it comes to that is going to like be different. Okay, let's move on to Fairy Oracle. I mean, this is really straight to the point here. You're starting fresh, you manifest, you're in, you're, you're studying, you're you're trying to wait, but I feel that it's just, it's going to pop. Like it's going to, it's going to really pop at some point. It's just, we, we need some time with that. And we have card number 17, the rocks. That's an interesting card. Okay. I'm going to read directly from the book with the rocks, but he's kind of about things getting, well, I'll just read. <laughs> the poor rock, always ill, sniffles, aches, and pains, a slight temperature. He just can't gather the energy to help himself, but he always has enough energy to get you to help him. He is, after all, the king of being, um, the king, wait, sorry. He is, after all, the king, and being a king means having servants. Not that he wouldn't help himself if only he felt up to it, but in the meantime, just be a dear and fix him a little something to eat, preferably expensive and time consuming to make, but it's just the thing to make him feel better. And you do want to make him feel better, don't you? And would you go out and pick up his dry cleaning? He would do it himself, but he's not feeling up to it. And besides, it's too cold to risk going out and remember what happened the last time, don't you? But you'll be fine. A brisk walk is just the thing for you. Do you know someone like this? This person is a master of manipulation. He can get you to do anything for him because he uses guilt as a finely honed tool. It's very difficult to say no to someone as needy as this person appears to be. But every once in a while, try saying that you just can't do whatever it is he's asking of you. This may come as a shock to the rocks. He isn't used to being denied anything, but will begin to restore the balance in your relationship. If you recognize yourself in the rocks, think about the reasons you ask people to do things for you that you are per perfectly capable of doing on your own. Is it the desire to control a person or a situation, or do you really need help? Combine the rocks with the speaker of truth and find the answer for yourself. Okay, so... In this situation, um, I'm feeling like you had a narcissist or a couple of them in your past and they were the master manipulator. They really turned things around. They were good at manipulating and twisting things and using up a lot of your time and energy, really being a, a energy vampire. So we're going to need to cut some cords from this, from this situation or situations. I have an ebook and a guided astral meditation for um, all free on my website for cutting cords. And I'm thinking that if there's any kind of any kind of anything it's definitely it's that it's um it's possibly getting past and like healing from somebody that was like this and that's why you went totally inward and you're like i'm not getting involved with anybody for a long time and maybe that's what happened. You had a, you had, we're not seeing it here. We're showing you like once you're in your, your Zen zone and you started to really focus on you and, and all that. And I think it's been a bit of a, of a, maybe a rocky wild ride because 
it hasn't been maybe totally fluid, but it's definitely, you've been progressing along the way. And, and this time here, February, 2021, you're definitely coming into a time where you're, it's a new, it's totally new. I feel very new with, with this, these two cards here with the full and the three of wands. It's, you're diving. It's almost like here she is going back into the pool of water. She's falling straight back into it. And then this is here going, okay, where are we going? <laughs> like once she comes up and she's just like on her way and it's going to, and it's going to happen. But this I'm feeling is really important to, to think about who were the manipulators? Who were the narcissists? Were the, was there even, you know, was it as bad as being categorized as domestic abuse even? And to really clear up this energy um, and to do some serious, you know, cord cutting, please read that book if you haven't already on my website. Um, but again, I feel like that's really the only thing. Like you've just, you've been doing you, we've been focused on you, you're fine with that. But I do see this like pop up instant family, possibly, or a surprise pregnancy, dare I say. Um, but it being a very, very happy occasion, abundance coming in for sure when it comes to all of this energy um, is with the, with this new moon, really kind of doing a reset. I'm really feeling this with the new moon, like a whole kind of new start, like kind of going from, I'm in my own space, my own zone. I don't want I don't, I'm not looking for relationship. I am not into it. Don't want it. I'm too busy. I'm working. I've got too many ideas, too much to create, too much going on. And then it shifts into, you know what? Maybe it, maybe that is where I'm headed. Maybe you have a download. Maybe you have a vision. Maybe you see something and then your energy just shifts. Maybe you, you do meet somebody or you come back in contact with somebody from long ago or something like that. Um, but definitely you need to clear space from, from past relationships that were unhealthy, manipulative, whatever. So you can really bring this in and not have any blocks because that that's definitely where, where that's headed. Really awesome. Congratulations on working on you, being that lone wolf, doing that thing on your own, being guided, you know, all that stuff is really vision. Okay. Here we go. Uh, bring love into the situation. Look at that new moon in Aquarius, which is what we have coming up. This is actually the first time I've seen this. Um, card new moon in Aquarius bring love into the situation so I think that's where you're at lovely wolf that you have decided that or you're getting to the point with this new moon bring love into the situation that you're like I'm ready for this before it's been I'm not and then now it's like you know maybe so and I think the sooner that you that you get on that board the sooner you'll see the waves whoo, take you towards it. There you go. Thank you so much for checking out this reading. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stick around for the other ones if you're interested. And um, be happy in love. It's coming. It's coming. Okay. Up next, we have the horses. I'm super excited about this. The horse is coming up. All righty, my horses, horse people, you chose the horse as your spirit guide, animal totem. Whether you are the horse, you identify as the horse, your horse is your animal totem, your person is the uh is the horse or you have or don't have a person who have that energy you're picking up on it pick or spoke to you whatever the case may be you chose this reading this is the reading for the horses so we are going to keep in mind that we have the new moon 
on the 11th, we have the, we're in the star date through the 12th, there are landing days on the 13th. Of course, Valentine's Day is on the 14th. We have a stellium going on right now in Aquarius and on the new moon, we'll have six planets in Aquarius, the sun, the moon, Saturn, Mercury, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, I believe. So, or is it Jupiter? You know, I'm, I think it's maybe it's Jupiter. I'm kind of tripping right now. Um, but either way, that's a lot. It's a lot going on. And then we have the, the 222 portal uh, coming up 11 days after the new moon on the 11th. So a lot of energy. I was guided compelled to do this pick a card for love and romance um which is really really cool and very different for me and i'm really into it i'm really digging it so thank you for joining me horses um and let's get going with our cards first card and second card first card the magician Second card, nine of wands. So the magician, right side up, nine of wands. Wow. Okay. Well then. <laughs> Third card, nine of swords. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Horses. Interesting. The magician. The nine of wands, the nine of swords. Another card. Ten of pentacles. Beautiful card, Ten of Pentacles. Four of Cups. Ten of Cups. Right side. The devil. So here's our four of cups, ten of cups, and the devil. The high priestess in reverse. Wow. Patty corner to this magician over here. I like it. Horses, 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 horses. The sun. Nice. Okay. Now, this starts coming to me pretty quickly here. I'm, I'm really picking up on what's going on. And that is um, there's definitely been some heartbreak. There's definitely been some darker nights. Um, there has been this like, uh, been cheated on been lied to, been treated like crap kind of stuff in your past when it comes to romantic partnerships. I really see you being in there and being in there and being and trying to make it work either for the same with the same person or it's just a recurring theme. There's definitely been um, just a, possibly one or a couple instances with people where 
it was really hard to separate. You're really connected. Uh, the sex was really good. If it was a sexual relationship, which is kind of what I'm feeling here, but it was definitely a difficult Yeah, it was definitely difficult. And um, but there was this support, there was support from family and friends. Um, but it has been when it comes to mostly the love stuff relationships, trusting other people, falling in love, there's definitely been a lot of heartache. And you tend, you, you do tend to kind of attach yourself to people pretty quickly and start thinking ahead. I think of what and that attaches you even more, like you're feeling all these energies. Um, this magician. Feels like, uh, now, at the same time, what I'm seeing here is we've got the magician here and the high priestess, the one, two card here. And it feels to me like you definitely have a really strong connection with a soulmate, dare I even say possibly twin flame. I'm not one to throw that term around lightly, trust me. Um, Cause not everybody has a twin flame. Not everybody's twin flame is meant to be romantic. So, and it just gets really, really that whole term, that whole relationship, that whole thing just gets really used, I think unnecessarily. Um, when we have, we all have soulmates, we all have a lot of soulmates, twin flames are a very special type of relationship. And again, they're not always the um, romantic in nature. But I really feel with this horse is that you are definitely, you definitely have a a really intense connection with somebody, whether you know them or not. Um, this very well could be, and I, I keep pointing to this because this, I'm feeling this energy here, like divine masculine, divine feminine. This is the pair. But there is still this separation thing going on. Um, there's a lot to clear here from the past for both of you. And, um, but guess what? Good news is the sun is definitely what, what is coming, what the union is going to bring. So it's going to be like this is what the future is showing me. So, wow, <laughs> it really is, it really is this energy here and, or you can't see that, sorry, it really is that energy with the 10 of cups, really magical, it'll feel like past life type of thing, kind of coming around, um, soulmate type person, um, for sure. And like this whole, like, I feel this energy here is very much, um, like that's what that, this is what needs to get like healed and processed from the past for both parties involved here. 
this energy, this energy, this energy here is all kind of the same thing. This is all like either when you were alone because somebody, um, who's, you know, they just left, like left you high and dry. Like where the heck did they go? Like maybe even like I needed them the most and they're just gone. Um, it could be that it was just a flat out betrayal being cheated on, being lied to, maybe even stuff taken from you, money taken from you, I'm feeling as well. Like really shitty stuff here. But again, having a lot of support. And if maybe not in the physical by actual people, then definitely with your spirit tribe, with your guides and guardians, with your animals that you have in your life, um, really helping you out and to heal from this bullshit and um and just kind of processing that out is really what's needed again cutting cords just keeps coming up for everybody so please consider working on cutting cords with this relationship or these relationships that happen but it feels very recurrent like having to um deal with people who just did not love you take you seriously that you know it was all about them kind of thing um and i feel like at times it can be easy to slip into that like it's always turned out really shitty almost always and and this could even be with like friends too um, maybe I'm picking up on some of that, but for the most part, I'm really seeing this is as a love relationship that there is this really intense, very much so, um, union in the works. You guys are headed towards each other, but there is stuff in the way that needs to be cleared. Um, And honestly, right now, there is more of the negative energy still attached than the positive. So it's like this is trying to come in, but there's still this locking it into place. Um, and we have the 10 of cups, 10 of pentacles here. So I'm also seeing like when this stuff gets lifted, we'll be able to bring those tens together, bring the one and the two together, and there you go. Most definitely, that'll be the way of it. These two tens, this is about divine connections of the ones that coming together as two. You have the one and the two. This is really powerful, very powerful, um, energy and honestly, there is going to be opposition to getting you guys together. To be honest with you, I'm kind of seeing that. So we really have to work on clearing the space of the negative energy of anything that's of the dark that's going to try to keep these two apart because it's powerful energy. We have the sun, the two, the ten of pentacles, the ten of cups. Um, really holding this energy, th these people together and any kind of darkness that tried to beat you down even before you guys got together, I think same with them. I think you're going to find that this person has a very similar story to yours. Very, very similar in so many ways. You're going to be like, me too, me too, me too, me too, me too. And it's really going to be like almost freakish how similar certain circumstances have been in your life. They just so parallel, so parallel. And it, the more you clear, the more they'll clear. The more they clear, the more you'll clear. And you'll just take these pieces apart so you can come together. So I'm going to do that for us right now. We're going to lift this energy. I'm honestly being guided to do this. We're going to lift that energy, turn it over. We're going to pull all of this together. You know, put, let's push this out here too. We're gonna put this sun right on top, and that's the energy that we wanna we wanna think about. 
this is what we're going towards. So healing all this other energy coming into this. Um, and it's really up to you because it's like you go wrong, I go wrong. And even if you don't know each other, it doesn't matter because you guys are connected. You really are intensely round and around and around <laughs> twin flames. I mean, sorry, soulmates or, or actually twin flames. And um, this union is destined to become, and it's just a matter of when and bringing this together because this is definitely on the horizon. Definitely. There's just a lot to get past on both sides. There's a lot to tune into. Uh, clear, again, cord cutting, a lot of cords to cut. Look at we have nine here, nine for you, nine for them, I'm hearing. There's just a lot. And light workers are the nines. So light workers are known as the nines. And it's kind of like you guys have your both sets of shit that you need to get past because you are what you are. It's just the nature of the game. When you came into this world, into this incarnation, you are going to be dealing with a lot of crazy crazy shit coming and meaning as far as, you know, the, the type of energetic opposition to, to really get in your way through life to kind of beat you down before you get there. That's kind of the name of the game in the spiritual war. I hate to say it, but that's the way that it is. And it doesn't matter because all of this is meant to be a past thing and this is meant to be the future thing but we need to get past that so just keep that in mind whoa <laughs> our card is the juggler for the heart of fairy so the juggler this is so this is like archetypes of um for love usually, why I chose to work or was, was guided to work with this. Okay, scattered attention reassessment priorities. Well, just look at him. He can balance at least two things on his fingers while running along from one important place to another. He's a very together sort of fairy, even though he leaves a trail of unconnected thought wherever he goes busily going about his business with one eye always on you just to make sure you are following along behind him. Have you ever been, have you even asked where he's leading you? I thought not, but it might be a good thing to do so. He loves surprises and he's certainly going to surprise you if you don't keep your wits about you. You may like it, but then again, you may not. When you meet the juggler, just slow down and take a look at where you're going. You may be doing lots of things at the same time and you may be very good at all of them, but just be sure you can see where you're going with all of these projects. Perhaps you are balancing the attention of too many people at the same time. If you scatter your thoughts and attentions wherever you go, you may end up running in circles and not giving anything or anyone the attention they deserve. Okay, so I think this is about seeing the, I think they were talked about the unconnected or the unconnected thoughts that are just kind of everywhere. And again, I feel like that has something to do with this past and needing to sort it out. There's just too much going on there in the past still. There was maybe so much moving so quickly from one thing to another or so much chaos that it was just too difficult to sort it out, to really get past it, really heal those wounds, really cut cords, or maybe you didn't even know to do that, but it's definitely necessary. So, you know, it's like, ask yourself, where are you going? Well, I wanna move forward. I want, you know, to get past all this. I want to have that. So this is the time, the perfect time to work on that, To Clear the clutter, clear the, the movement and away from maybe figuring out what needs, what needs to be cleared and, you know, cut those cords so you can actually go in the direction they're meant to go in. And...
I'm also hearing assess who's currently around because there may just be someone that takes up a lot of energy. Um, maybe a friend, could be a best friend even, somebody you spend time with that maybe secretly they don't want you to find a, find a person. I hate to say it, but... <clears throat> Just think about and assess, as I'm hearing, think about and assess who and who you're following, who, not necessarily like, like you're a follower, but who you're around, who, who you spend time with, where your energy goes, and where things need to be pulled back and cut, and you need to start using that energy on yourself. Have faith in your dreams. Have faith in your dreams. Waxing crescent moon. There you go. Have faith. This is destined to happen again. This is a very intense connection here. Have faith in your dreams. Um, and actually dreams. Like they're saying, when you're dreaming, you may be already getting visions or, or you know, premonitions about this person or this union. Um, and you may even think sometimes, you know, this is crazy, uh, but it's not, you're not crazy. It's not crazy. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> it's magic. Okay. Okay. Of course, thank you so much. I hope this resonated and this, this helped you and, um, work on those chords. That's all I can say. Work on the energy, um, bringing this together. All righty. Thank you so much for watching this. And uh, we're going to be moving on to the elephants next. I'm super excited for the elephants. Again, thank you for being here. Hello there, elephant people. Thank you for joining me. Really excited to do this reading. I just did, uh, what did we just do? We yeah, did horses, horses, we did the wolves, we did the lions, and now last but not least, the elephants. So we'll get some information for you for love and romance. That I hope helps you. Okay. First card, Knight of Swords um, in reverse. The Devil, or sorry, Death, straight up. The Death, nice. Oops, there's a card for you. Six of Cups. Six of Cups. Death and Knight of Swords in reverse. Wait, oh. Okay. Six of Cups after death. Interesting. Interesting. The Sun. Reverse. Oh, all righty then. Three of Pentacles. Three of Swords. The Two of Swords. And the Seven of Cups. And the Ten of Wands. Okay, so Six of Cups. The Sun. Three of Pentacles. Three of Swords. Two 
two of swords. Seven of Cups and Ten of Wands to make nine cards. All righty, let's tune in here and see what we get for elephants. Okay. Okay, elephants. I am feeling with this that you have gone through a very sudden shift in your consciousness, um, this night of swords, but he's in reverse to start us off with. So really, kind of telling me that there was a, a swift and, and sudden change. Uh, literally this death card so your spiritual awakening could have been very sudden it could have been with a lot of loss attached to it a lot of confusion possibly but that pretty soon into it you we're on track with understanding what the deal was that this has been a thing, um, kind of the trajectory you're probably going on since I remember probably since childhood, there's been spiritual things that happened in your life really like profound, possibly spiritual things that happened when, you know, since childhood. And also since your spiritual awakening, your understanding that you have guides that are with you, that watch over you. Um, But it's never like this whole like metaphysical, spiritual connection stuff. Um, I can see it's like, yeah, I believed in this stuff, but it wasn't that big of a deal in my life. And then all of a sudden, boom, totally new situation and really tapping in with your infinite story, your soul, getting into what it means to, to be a, a, a soul in a body and not just a human living a life and kind of going through the motions. It's about like the real path, like what you were meant for. Um, I can see that in the past, there was a possibly difficult childhood, um, possibly come from It's like this is superseding this and I'm just getting kind of visions here of really being tied up in a familiar way with family or something, even not even necessarily like just childhood, but 
it could have been all through your life. And as like, once you finally got to a certain age, you separated from that um, or them. Uh, this two of swords, that's your two of swords straight up. But we're two of swords in reverse. So it feels like at this time, we are we're tapping in more with our guidance, ready to move forward. Um, and still sorting stuff out, still having to sort stuff out about the, the history, about the past. Uh, I feel that I feel really like clairvoyant energy really real love of nature and Gaia and this is a driving force for you. Um, I think you long to be in nature even more, maybe contemplating some serious lifestyle changes, be in nature more even. Um, because that's where you're being pulled. Your rebirth is like reconnecting yourself back to the great mother and creating a new, a new story with family. I feel like starting with your connection with nature, my dear elephant. Interestingly enough here, I'm not seeing a whole lot with actual like love and romance. This is more about your sudden, feels like a very sudden rebirth, a lot of shifting going on, a lot of sudden shifting going on. Maybe the pandemic had some, really something to do with it. Like it all came about after the pandemic started or in a really big way, maybe you were dabbling a little bit, but life was just life and you could not like focus on that. But I feel like things kind of really shifted, totally changed in every way, shape or form. And um, really quickly understood I'm doing the spiritual awakening thing because you were guided to figure it out pretty quickly. Uh, and yeah, you've been having a lot of there's been a rapid succession in your abilities, your awakening, your downloads, all of it, all of it, all of it. And in that you've, you've been dealing with the, with the past family wounds. Um, maybe you even have a hard time remembering everything. So it's also like there's a little bit of mystery there when it comes to family stuff. Um, <laughs> maybe there's very specific abuse. Sorry to say it, but maybe there's very specific physical or even sexual abuse in the past. Um, in childhood or some type of something like that. Uh, that really kept life and you kind of more and more in the shadow, in the dark, in having a hard time to connect with people in love, with love, because it was just like really hard to trust people, really hard to get close to people. Maybe you've just had an aversion to all of that kind of stuff that 
at all. Maybe it's just never been a thing for you at all in your life. Love and romance, sex, all that good stuff. Um, you can consider yourself asexual. Maybe you're even bisexual or gay, but you definitely are not into or haven't been into exploring that. Uh, even that could have shifted. You could have seen yourself as 100% heterosexual and through your spiritual awakening, you realize, you know what, maybe I'm bi. And that's been something to think about. So there's just been a lot to process that like love and romance and all of that um, is just not even been a part of it, um, to be quite honest here. Ten of Wands is, you know, we're definitely heading out. You have protection. You're on your way. Um, you're on your way to sorting it out and getting past it and getting into a place of healing, going like water represents healing. And so that's what I'm seeing here. So you being led by your guides and guardians to ways for you to heal, heal emotionally, energetically. I feel for the most part, this is about healing energetically because you kind of, like, I don't feel like there's a lot of current pain. I just feel that it's just more like you're still kind of wrapped up in the past with energy. So again, the theme has been to cut cords, work on cutting cords so you can get past this for real. Cause it's like, you're on your way. Like you're not fully in it, but you're, it's in reverse. So you're getting past it, but you're, it's still active. It's, it's still active because you just haven't had the tools, I don't think, to Gilbert and his tail. You haven't had the tools maybe to know what to do or how to do this. It's all, I feel this, a lot of this is new. For those of you who, um, Maybe it's a, like a, a leveling up. So maybe you've been on this ascension path and spiritual awakening for a while, but it's just really leveled up um, in the last year and into 21 now. Um, and you really may, and this also could be like, maybe you felt, so I'm picking up on something else here. Maybe you felt that you had a person, um, that things were set, and it didn't, they left, it didn't work out. Um, you were caught off guard in that. So that could be part of this too. I'm picking up a whole new set of energies coming in. Very different. Okay, so this could be about yeah, a whole, um, some, a situation that you, you were in, you, they left, it was, it's been in and out, back and forth, possibly, um, and every time they come around, it's, it's kind of like this kind of thing, energetically, like, oh my God, you're killing me, this is so hard, uh, and there's just finally, it's so funny. Like I see this as a stoplight. I keep seeing, I'm seeing this as a stoplight and it's finally like green, like you can go now. Like it's, it's done, you know, it's over. You can go now, you, you know, you explore that whole thing. And now it's just time to go and, and you're just making your way out of it. So that could, that's another thing. So you could just be out, finally out of the thing with somebody um, as well. And that's kind of triggering a whole new, a whole new thing for you. This rebirth thing is happening. Again, there's this energetic healing that needs to happen and to be guided, to let yourself be guided to
how to do that. Cutting cords, I have a, a an ebook and a meditation on my website for cord cutting. All of it is free. And I do energy healing worldwide. I have an Evolve Now program. So please look into that because that's definitely, I think for some people here is exactly what the doctor ordered. Um, well, I think it's definitely not the case for a lot of people, but but here I'm really seeing that, you know, this is, this energy is about really need, okay, what are my next steps? How am I getting past this? And, and really working on, on that, that being the challenge or the, the, what's up next. It's not, I don't really, I'm not really feeling a whole lot of new love coming in just yet. There's stuff to get past right now. Um, Yeah, so it could be one of those scenarios here is coming out. So there's a few different possibilities here. So however that may work for you, um, but know that you're on a path definitely that's very protected, very guarded, that kind of, I mean, it's not an elephant, but kind of pretend that it is. It's like, I've got you, I'm carrying all your stuff. We can go, going into the future. Um, and we can really make it what we want at this point. So there's a lot of open possibilities here. Let's do, let's do a, this is a, uh, the heart of fairy oracle. So we'll get one of these cards and then we'll get a moon card, a moonology card to round it out. Oh, the sorcerer. Whoa, card number 27, the sorcerer. Okay, let's see what we get with that. Interesting help through magic consequences. Look at this person. Are you surprised? He's such a dull little man. Funny hat, funny nose, big ears, not paying the slightest bit of attention to you, you would think. Look again. There he is nestled in the tree roots, listening, thinking, just about to move. And when he does, you might want to duck. Sometimes the most powerful beings appear to be the most insignificant. The sorcerer is one of those beings. He doesn't create flashy illusions and he doesn't astound with feats of magic. But if you need to call on a powerful being as you travel in fairy, he is the one to seek out. Approach him with caution. He is really not concerned with the everyday struggles and endeavors of fairy, let alone the human world. He works for his own ends, but he may help you if he, if it suits his purpose. Think carefully before you ask him for anything. His help could have interesting consequences in the future. If you meet him, it may be best to nod respectfully and pass on. On the other hand, when he turns up, you may know exactly what you need to ask for. If you have an intuitive flash about why the two of you have come together, then by all means, ask your question and see what happens, as long as you are prepared for the consequences. Okay, let's see. Give me a second here. Um, well, I guess one of the things that's coming up here is that there's, there may be like a, a swing back or like a slide back or something where maybe this situation that we talked about, um, I, I don't know that there's something kind of comes around to pull you in um, and just be aware of that. Okay. 
And I'm feeling like be aware and be Be careful of who you go to for help because not, not everybody who's, who seems like they're, you know, helpful or going to help you or have your best interest at heart, you know, for your ascension or, you know, any, something like that, just be careful when it comes to who you work with energetically. I mean, this is just blanket good advice on any level, but I'm feeling like this is, has something to do with not getting wrapped up into, into things that are going to, are time consuming and, and seem interesting possibly, but are just, it's kind of, just not the right path or something to that effect that like somebody can kind of get you wrapped up in something that seems really sexy or interesting that seems like it's a thing to to do for for yourself energetically or maybe it's about manifesting or law of attraction or something to that effect um but also what i'm feeling here is just don't just because somebody seems like they're an authority on something doesn't mean that they're, you know, the good for you to follow or learn from or heal with or any of that stuff. Just be really careful when it comes to that. Um, and this could also be, I'm also seeing like somebody that looks really good, but they're really kind of like a narcissist. Like they can, again, appear to be really sexy, appear to be um, I'm hearing too good to be true. So if there is a person that appears to be too good to be true, they probably are. Um, maybe they're just, maybe they're just looking to use you for something to, again, it just seems like to take your energy, take your energy, it, like it appearing one way, but it being different than that. Um, because I feel like now that you've had this rebirth, like you're a really powerful person energetically and people that are not so ethically and morally on the, on the up and up or really aren't light workers, you know, they're just, they can really identify people that are really new and raw and kind of take from that energy, really manipulate it. So you have to be careful when it comes to that, really, really careful who you work with, who you open up to energetically, just really be discerning about that. Um, stay away from anything dark, go towards the light really follow your guidance there. And then last but not least, let's get into moonology. Whoa. And again, you know, this, these are general readings. So some of it may register, some of it may not. If you want a private reading, please go to my website. And again, just work on cutting cords, work on, on leaving, you know, healing from the past, doing an inventory, which is talked about in my ebook on, on that. You may also look at my other ebook. What is psychic attack? What's the spiritual war? Cause I feel like your energy is just always kind of been used to feed negative energy and you just haven't been aware of it. So you just really need to understand that. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Yay, full moon in Capricorn. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Perfect, perfect. I like that. <laughs> and I see that too. Like you're going to be on the right track. You just have to, you are, I mean, this is what's going on here. So definitely that same kind of energy um 
So this whole thing, this tough, tough relationship, whether it was a person who suddenly left you or you got away from them, you finally saw this person is a narcissist, they're crazy, they're brainwashing me, they're abusive, you got away from that, whether it was family stuff, you got away from that, could have been all of it, God bless your little heart if you had to deal with all of that, but it was a sudden awakening after that, and it's just been up, up, up since then, and um, and yeah, the end of a tough cycle for sure, and you're just going through the, the, the next, the, the beginnings of the healings, beginning of the, of the next chapter just beware of people who who's just it feels like this is just going to be a thing you just have to be very aware of your energy and other people that want to come in kind of take from that in different ways or are compelled to take to to get negative just to feed off of your negative energy so just please be aware of that um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely, this, it's good. This is, this is really, really good. You're, you're rebirthing, getting past stuff, starting new. Um, you there's going to be more downloads, more guidance, more stuff coming to help you understand. Um, the psychic awareness stuff that's going to be coming more synchronicities, more guidance, more angel numbers, stuff like that, more connections with your spirit animals, um, all of that, all of that. So yay, I'm, I'm excited. So congratulations on that, getting past this, getting into a new place and um, being here, being guided to, to this reading. Please like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you haven't already, leave a comment. Let me know if this resonated with you. And um, I hope to see you back again soon. Thank you so much. Um, and have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.